Okay, welcome. Today I wanted to offer some reflections about boarding school and captivity and boarding school and prison. Why they're quite similar and I'm also going to read some of Stephen Fry's uh, Moab is my wash pot where he just talks about his experience of prison and how similar it was to boarding school. So. Okay, so yeah, it's a three-pronged um, uh, talk today. This idea of prison and boarding school. Now, I've been listening to George Chavrin speak. One of the conferences I attended, yes, last year, and I'm it, it basically in preparation because I'm going to be uh, interviewing Joy uh, next week down in London um, for the the new film. And so I've been researching and she's talking about captivity and in it she's talking about Stephen Fry. So I was um, reading Stephen Fry's book just now just to find his quote about um, captivity in boarding school. And then the third prong is I also found a poem that I wrote as a 17 year old while I was still at boarding school. And I thought I would bring that in as well. So we'll begin with this idea of captivity. So Joy Shavarin talks about the A, B, C, D of boarding school syndrome. First is abandonment. B is bereavement, or homesickness. C is captivity. D is dissociation. So the captivity part, she, what she says is these children are captive. They are not able to go away. So jokes are often made by Stephen Fry and many comedians about when they're in boarding school, they were in prison. And he actually managed to get himself into prison so that he had the opportunity to find out that he could manage prison really well because he was used to it. You know, he could handle the screws, he could handle the situation because he'd been imprisoned in his childhood. So... You know, how that relates to us maybe later on, and she goes on to speak about freedom is the problem quite often. And for some, that captivity is endless. So it's almost like we're captive. Maybe it is the routine. We can't really stop. You know, so many of us as exporters are workaholics. We just keep going and going and going and going. It's like this steamroller until we have a breakdown or a health crisis. Then we start to do some therapy. That was what happened to me the monastery in my 20s, um, just a complete and utter meltdown, really. Couldn't get out of bed, mentally self harm you know, physically self-harming. Um, so, you know, what this idea is, is like, yeah, we were captive. A lot of boarding schools in the countryside, you couldn't just run away. You know, there was always something to do. And those children who did run away were either brought back by the police, brought back by other students, no, not other students, sorry, by their parents or by um, the teachers. And I remember one boy ran away when I was uh, at school. And I think it was, yeah, his, um, his parents who brought him back. And I was like horrified. It's like, well, surely you realise this boy is suffering. And then you would just take him out of the school. So, you know, I think this is important to know is that, you know, the, the, the captive, we were captive. And so what we did, as I shared in last week's video, which I'll put a link to at the end of this, is that we controlled ourselves. So we learnt to fit in. And I think reading through my diary that I wrote, I've got it here. Um, this was my, my diary from 11 years old at boarding school. Um, and in it, the thing that I noticed in there, which was most shocking, it was boredom. I was bored most of the time. And that for me is an aspect of captivity. You can't get it. You can't distract yourself. You can't go and watch TV when you want. or you know. And maybe that's not a bad thing if you're guided into other things. Um, but I remember that, that, that boredom. So moving on and reading a bit of um, 
Stephen Fry's book. He says, that's the key to my contentment at Pucklechurst. Puckle Church, which is uh, the prison he was in. I've said it before in interviews and it's been taken as a witty joke, but life in prison was a breeze for me. Because at that point, I had spent most of my life at boarding school. I didn't mean to suggest by that, as was supposed, that boarding schools are like prisons. I meant that prisons are like boarding schools. <laughs> I know how to tease authority enough to be popular with the inmates and tolerated by the screws. I knew how to stay cheerful and think up diversions, scams and pranks. I knew, ironically, given my inability to do so in real boarding schools, how to survive. Some of the 16-year-olds at Pucklechurst had never left home before. Yeah. So that just shows, you know, he found that, as he says. But life in prison was a breeze for me because at that point I'd spent most of my life at boarding school. I meant that prisons are like boarding schools. Okay, so, you know, that's from him. And then reading my 17-year-old uh, poem, it says, it was called Trip. It says, you're stealing my mind. I said, you're stealing my mind. Voices are running through my head, but they're not mine, they're yours. Let me make a decision. Let me show you my vision. And I will, I will be. Locked in this prison, yet you feed me television to teach me the real world. Do I look stupid? I certainly feel it. Come on, read on. I'll tempt you to delve into my mind, find the horror, find the truth of it all. Go on, read my crystal ball. Suddenly it's black and I'm falling. Do you feel it? Do you feel the pain? It's all imagination, perhaps a religious sensation, but it's life and we live it. So smile. So that's a poem that I wrote as a 17 year old, a month before leaving boarding school and that linking into prison. It's like, ah, I hadn't thought of that. I hadn't looked at that, that poem until recently. So, you know, so it's just to notice that we grew up in this prison. Yeah. So it's to bring mindfulness. Ah, where is this prison still operating? within me am I really stuck to the rules you know in my book I wrote about this uh, idea that we create these rules I must not trust others and um, you know these different rules and part of the leaving of the prison is to start to change these rules around and how we do this and I've got a video um, up on YouTube about changing the rules uh, boarding school survivors is like can we reframe them ah actually i can trust people now people are trustworthy so we change our beliefs we create a new system we i think is um i think it was george lucas once said he says we live in a cage with the door open we just got to step through um the you know and most of us live in this cage but actually the door is open we can step out and how we do that is in a work, you know, it might be therapy, it might be group work, you know, some of Nick Duffel's um, work, or some of the work I do, the men's circles, it's like stepping within, doing our inner work, and remembering joy, I think that's a key for healing, to leave the prison, part of the prison was, we couldn't be too up, couldn't be too down, it was flatline, you couldn't be too excited and happy, you couldn't be too down and sad or crying I had to just be like that part of our healing is both the joy maybe go dancing find what you love and the other side is the tears the grief the pain integrating those parts of you bringing your gold back in into your your, your spirit your being so yeah so I think those three prongs of joy of Stephen Fry and my my younger self, I think, kind of paints this picture. And I'm talking to someone recently, them saying, every single person, if they were to give a metaphor for boarding school, it was prison. So it's like, oh yeah, 
yeah, we couldn't escape. Um, so just being aware, okay, where am I still running this program? Okay, and that's okay. It's okay. Now I start to find my new vision of something of joy, something of service. How may I give back to this world? How may I serve? So, yeah, that's um, that's my reflection for today. Um, little bits. Um, got a great podcast going live on Friday with Matthew Green, who is a leading climate journalist. Uh, worked for the Financial Times, Reuters, talking about wounded leaders talking about boarding school he'd read Nick Duffel's book and we had a great discussion about right how could that be linked into the struggles we're having in the world and then next week I'm going to be interviewing uh, a lady called um, Helen Roche who's a PhD talking about boarding schools the Nazi boarding schools and how they were linked into the British boarding schools um, and her research there and then next Friday, I'm going to be interviewing Joy Chavrin down in London. So exciting. Um, great. Uh, so have a wonderful week. And yeah, any questions, please do let me know.